Greece, Sao Paulo, Bali, you stay. This is the kind of story you need right now. It's in rural New Mexico. The Christmas capital of the world. The world? Yeah. November 6th. A couple Christmas traditions I'd like to share. Might be good for your blog. Christmas love. There's something special about this place. Worth writing home about. Sarah Canning, Zach Santiago. The Christmas Yule Blog. Premieres Friday, November 6th at 8. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime. 24-7 holiday movies all season long. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to It's a Wonderful Lifetime Live. I am your host, Jessica Radloff. I am also the West Coast editor at Glamour, and I am so thrilled to be here today. I wore a special holiday-themed sweater. Don't know if you can see it too well. I have my hot chocolate as a must-have here. Um, but I am so thrilled to be doing this, like I said, because I know it's been a really heavy year for a lot of people, and I think we need the joy of the holidays and the magic of the moment more than ever. So with that said, I am so excited because we're going to have two of the cast of Lifetime's holiday movies with us today, the cast of A Christmas Yule Blog and A Welcome Home Christmas. And the great thing is about after every conversation, you guys will be able to ask questions in a little Q&A box. You'll see that below on your screen. So after we finish, we're going to try to get to as many fan questions as we can and answer those. So with that said, you just saw the trailer for their new movie, which premieres next Friday night, November 6th on Lifetime, the cast of the Christmas Yule blog. Please welcome Zach Santiago and Sarah Canning. Hi, guys. Hi, Jessica. Hi. It's so good to have you, and I love you're in very bright colors. So thank you for uh, for bringing your game today. No problem. <laughs> no time. Yes, ex spirit. exactly. I can only imagine what it must have been like to be in a lifetime holiday movie. What was that experience like to film? Well, <laughs> for me, um, I it was amazing. It was my first lifetime holiday movie. Um, and it was a, my first filming uh, after this sort of the whole COVID chapter shutdown of everything. So it, um, it was a bit of a twilight zone coming back to do it, but there, I don't think there's a better way to do it than a, a project that, that is full of hope and uh, positivity. Um, so it was a good introduction to get back to work. Um, some good spirit and it was definitely much needed. I agree with that. It was also my first project back um, after all of the lockdowns happened. So um, yeah, I, I, I felt fortunate to be working with Zach and so many other um, great people. We all like really worked hard, I think, to um, bring as much levity and, and, and uh, a nice lighthearted, um, to, to a lighthearted film, but we also really worked hard to keep each other safe filming in these times. So that was, uh, it was really special to just feel really taken care of and to feel like we were making something that hopefully would bring people, um, yeah, some lightness of spirit for sure. It is so beautiful, this film, because it's set in New Mexico, but where did you guys actually <laughs> film? We filmed this in the interior of BC in the Okanagan Valley, which is a wine country and lots of orchards and, uh, um, but there's also it's kind of in this rain shadow of the of the Rockies, so it's this act, it's actually a desert that you can trace all the way down to Mexico, so it gets pretty hot there. There's cactus <laughs> and there's rattlesnakes and um, lots of tropical fruits, so it was a good way to to sort of camouflage the fact that <laughs> that we were in BC filming this kind of desert Christmas movie. But it was it was like a paradise. It was great to be to be away somewhere safe and isolated and nice. Wow. You know, one thing I've always wondered is, of course, you're actors. So this is what you're paid to do is if it's really warm outside, pretend that you're freezing cold and it's the holidays. But what is that really like, Sarah, when you are filming a holiday Christmas movie and it might be 85 degrees outside or, or what is that? 28 degrees Celsius. What is that like to do that when you're supposed to be in the winter holiday spirit? 30, 38 degrees Celsius. Oh, okay, sorry. I gotta, I gotta work. That's why I'm not a mathematician no. for a living. <laughs> no, that's okay. I can never do that conversion either. I, all I know is it was hot. It was very hot. Um, but, you know, we had an amazing wardrobe designer, Flo May Barrett, designed our costumes, and she tried to be very um, cognizant of the weather. Um, luckily, you know, there, there wasn't snow on the ground because sometimes when you get into holiday films with 
fake snow and then you really you really need to play that cold thing we were just sort of like yeah we're in new mexico we'll throw on a very light scarf <laughs> so it wasn't um it wasn't as as bad as it could have been maybe in terms of having to act the the, the chilliness but um i yeah that was probably the biggest challenge actually about the film was to try to not you know have your brain melt remembering <laughs> lines and it's that hot <laughs> yeah Zach, tell us a little bit about playing Oscar and what you loved about him. Uh, well, Oscar, Oscar's a pretty interesting guy. I love him because music is a big part of my life. I grew up playing music or, and dance and, and, and whatnot. So Oscar, the character, he's a, a music producer and he loves his mom and dad, just like me. So there's some great things in there I could relate to. Um, another thing I really enjoyed about playing Oscar is I got to play opposite Sarah Canning. So it's kind of like I didn't even have to work for the whole oh. time we filmed this because you just got to be there, know who you are, and just, yeah, when you have a great, uh, a great uh, scene mate and a cast mate, then, then it, it makes, makes every job easier. All right, Sarah, give it right back to him. <laughs> what, was the, what was the best part about playing Caroline? Um, it, I, I mean, I, I loved the sort Look of- Look at you blushing, I love it. <laughs> just like hide behind my hair. Uh, the blogging aspect was really fun. Um, uh, I, I got to sort of trace the film and, and how she was uh, sort of falling in love with this town through the blog posts and how she's sort of warming up. And, and, and yeah, that, the blog posts and working with Zach <laughs> mm -hmm. and our wonderful director as well. Um, Heather Hawthorne Doyle was, she was a real joy to work with. Everybody was, was wonderful to work with, but mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we, we just had so much fun. We really had fun making this movie. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope, I hope that translates in, in watching it. Imagine if people watch it and they're like, oh, these two are having a terrible time. Oh my yeah. God, no. We felt I like watched, we were having fun. Yeah. I, it definitely comes through. I watched it over the weekend. I truly enjoyed it. It was really cool though. I mean, even though you didn't film in New Mexico to see a movie like this filmed in New Mexico because normally you just don't get a holiday movie. You don't think New Mexico, but it's yeah. beautiful there and it does snow there. So it is really cool to see this come to life. Are there any fun behind the scenes tidbits or stories that we should look out for when we're watching the film? Anything that you would be like, oh my gosh, if you only knew what happened as we were filming that scene? Uh, what do you think, Zach? Um, that's suitable think for Lifetime Live right. here. <laughs> right. Um, there was one, I, I think one kind of interesting thing is one of the locations, um, there were there were people that were using the location while we were yeah. shooting there, so trying to trying to um, deal with like civilians, you know, who are just regular folk trying to live their life, kind of in the same space as we're being these alternate people and telling this magical story, um, and these two worlds kind of crossing. That was interesting. I think the other thing was um, what a lot of people don't know behind the scenes. I ate about a bushel of peaches and a basket of plums like every day between scenes because we're living in like I mean we're filming in like the greatest orchard I think that I've ever been to and it's so much fresh fruit so <laughs> we were just raiding the fruit stands the local fruit stands and bringing all this back to set and so that was a big part of behind the scenes I think. I think you just scripted the summer movie continuation of the Christmas Yule blog it'll be the summer what the, the summer peach orchard orchard or something blog or you know I yeah. need more time to think on that but um <laughs> but there you go you'll do that how about you Sarah was there anything funny behind the scenes for you I'm just very pleased with Zach's use of the word bushel I think that <laughs> should be highlighted <laughs> um yeah that's true I did I forgot about that actually like the people staying at at our location we had a little dog run into a take do you remember that Zach I was thrilled yeah. Yeah, yeah. a little tiny creature. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, I think people have an idea of a film set and they're like, oh, cool. And then within 12 minutes, they're like, okay, can you guys like <laughs> get, get out of our living space? <laughs> <laughs> um, my light just almost fell on me. So <laughs> I'll That's just fix cool. that. But yeah, it, uh, yeah, I would say probably the location was the most was the most interesting, but it was it was an amazing place to shoot. 
speaking of locations, one thing that I loved, especially as an editor at a magazine, you know, here Caroline is also an editor, though she's a travel editor. If you both could spend the holidays in any city around the world, where would you most want to go? What city is on your bucket list to go there specifically for the holidays? Coursera in the light. This is I'm so sorry. Fun. Just give me one second. Be, I'm so sorry that it's. Don't be sorry. These things happen. It's kind of fun, you know? Especially when you're on set, right? These yeah. things, we've got all these lights around us all the time. Usually we'll have a, a grips that are professionals doing that. We should have sent one over to your house. <laughs> I know. I'm just going to get rid of it just because it's better than it falling on my head. No, that's um, definitely true. Safety I would first. choose New York to answer your question. <laughs> okay, let's hear. How come New York? And how I spent there during the holidays. Yes, I spent Christmas there two years ago, and it was uh, with a few of my very close friends, and it was really incredible. And I think, especially now, with um, the sort of lockdown situations that that we're all in, we're probably all dreaming of of those those times when we could travel, and mm -hmm. also, you know, really appreciating what we can do until that becomes our reality again. Right. Um, but yeah, New York City would be mine. It's such yeah. a special place. And how about you, Zach? Yeah, New York is a great one. I, I would maybe, well, first of all, Christmas is, Christmas to me is, is family. So um, I'll tell you the city that I, I would love to be in where I, I know Christmas to an extent, uh, Madrid. I, I love Madrid. I love Madrid in the, in the summer, in the winter, but it's really nice at Christmas time there. But wherever my family is, then that's Christmas. So we could be in any city, in any town, we could be in a Winnebago on the side of a, a road, you know, but um, I think wherever, wherever my family is, that that's the city I want to be in. If I could bring us all to Madrid or New York, even better. I love it. I love when you said Madrid and I was like, oh yes. Meanwhile, I've only been to the airport in Madrid. I have no idea what Madrid is really like, but it sounds amazing. So I was like, yes, let's all go. Um, okay. I have a fun game that I came up with a few days ago called this or that holiday edition. I worked really hard on this. So if it's terrible, honestly, feel free to, to ruin my dreams here. But <laughs> I want to know, I want to know your honest answer as soon as it comes to you. No second guessing on this. Are you guys ready to play? Yes. Yes. Okay. First one. Would you rather choose classic holiday attire or ugly Christmas sweater? Classic. Yeah. Classic. How come? Look at this blazer he's wearing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I don't know. I think I just like, yeah, there, there's this, I immediately thought of It's a Wonderful Life in my head. Like, I love that film so much. And I think just like, yeah, it's, it's just sort of that feeling, that sort of romantic Christmas feeling. Yeah, dress up nice for the holidays, you know? Feel like it's special, I feel. And have fun with, with your homies and wear some goofy stuff and wear a sweater sometimes. But yeah, any any excuse to put on, to get a little haberdashery going, then uh, <laughs> then I'm there. I love, trust me, I've got a light up menorah sweater. So I'm, I'm right there with you. Got to have fun and also uh, be a little classy too. Okay, next one. Real tree or fake tree? Real. Real. Like it. Okay, clear lights or color lights? Color color warm climate for the holidays or a white christmas white christmas I, that's i'm canadian yeah. I like <laughs> yeah, me too christmas. sarah yeah i love that okay home alone or die hard home alone, home alone. <laughs> it kind of goes with the new york thing as you were saying i yeah. i agree okay um it's a wonderful life or love actually it's a wonderful it's life. a wonderful life <laughs> hands down hands Boom. down <laughs> i love it okay hot chocolate or mm -hmm. eggnog eggnog hot chocolate i like have you ever had eggnog sarah yes i have i i love like you know i could do like a shot of eggnog but that's about <laughs> that's sort of, it's I'm an acquired out. taste yeah no it's good but it yeah i I could drink gallons of hot chocolate though. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. Okay. Next one here. One big expensive gift or lots of little stocking stuffers? For ourselves or yes. for other people? 
for you. So uh, either a big expensive gift or lots of little stocking stuffers. I'm not really good with gifts. So if it's expensive, that might make me like a little um, shy. And uh, so little, 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 in a, little stocking stuffers, especially if it's crafty stuff or a homemade thing or a little baking or something like that's all I need. That makes me yeah. happy. I agree. Good answer, Zach. I agree. Same for you, Sarah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Playing in the snow or staying inside and watching the snow fall? Got to do both. Got to, you got to watch it fall. Both. Okay. Oh, playing in the wow. Snow. Yeah. Playing, playing in the, the snow. snow. I love that. Okay. Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas or Adam Sandler's Hanukkah song? Mariah Carey. I'm going to go with Adam Sandler. I still play. I uh, Jessica, it. you were talking about, um, you had mentioned, I think, in one conversation about how um, in St. Louis, they, they were playing Christmas music at an odd time of the year at the beginning of, uh, um, well, I, I DJ, I've DJed a long time. So Did you really? I would, yeah. And I would play Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas <laughs> in the summer. I mean, before COVID, I would just play it randomly at times. I was going to say that. I was and like, I bet make, Zach plays that song all the time. <laughs> makes people happy and people lose yeah. it. So um, yeah, that's a, yeah, that goes any time of the year for me. I love it. I love that song too. I know before we started, we were talking about how in St. Louis before as the pandemic was just first happening, the radio stations here started playing Christmas music to make people feel a little bit more better about what was happening in the world. And it was great until I was like, wait a second, this is, a, <laughs> this is almost making it a little more strange now, but it was fun. I can't wait for it to start up again. Okay, last few questions here. Pick your favorite candle scent either a warm sugar cookie or balsam fir warm sugar cookie yeah it yeah. depends if i have warm sugar cookie to eat then i take the balsam fir but if there haven't been any of those cookies then i'll take it in a candle got it love that fat free too okay flannel or velvet velvet oh uh, hmm, this is tough for me this is very tough I might go with flannel. I might go with flannel, though I do love velvet too, but. I say flannel to sleep in, velvet to a party. Yeah, well, I'm yes. keeping in the theme of classic, of dressing up. You I, know yes, I, mean? I got yeah. it. I like it. Okay, last one, naughty or nice? <laughs> nice, it's Christmas. Be nice, everyone. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Okay, nice. <laughs> I love it. We'll All right. Well, let's, name. let's go to some nice question and answers that I'm getting in. Make sure if you haven't sent yours in yet to start doing that. And I'm going to read them. Um, one viewer would like to know, and you kind of mentioned this a little bit, but I find it so fascinating. So let's talk about it more. He wants to know, did you film during the pandemic? And you did. So when did you film it during the pandemic? And what was that like for both of you? We started production in the, um, later half of July. Um, and I was definitely a little, I don't want to use the word nervous, but it, it, it certainly felt strange going back to work. Mm. Um, I was very excited to go back to work, but I, I mean, I hadn't, I hadn't been to a restaurant, like I hadn't done anything. Mm. Um, so it, it, it was definitely a wild feeling. And, um, but I, I knew that Zach and I were on the same page, like all of my scenes are with Zach and I knew that we were going to work really hard to, like, it was really important to us to keep ourselves and, and the film safe. So I, I think I, I felt better pretty much as soon as we got there and yeah. the, the, all of the protocols on set um, really made me feel like, okay, this, this is going to be all right. Um, and it, and it really just, it, and then it just felt so liberating because I love, I love working. I love being on set and I've done a few independent projects since this movie. And this movie really kind of put me in a good place for like feeling okay with being at work. And mm. yeah. I love that. And Zach for you. Yeah. Kind of the same thing. There are concerns because you don't know what it's going to look like. What's this world going to be like? What's filming going to be like now? And how, how are we going to get the days done and how are people going to be behave and are people going to start getting sick like is it going to rifle through a whole crew or something but yeah everyone was calm the protocols were great sarah and i definitely were really really careful because if one of us got sick then that's it for the film and everyone's out of work and the story can't get told and 
we wouldn't be here today with you, Jessica. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, we were super careful. I felt confident in that. And then the stuff I've gone to work on after we've seen how since film sets have learned how to deal with, with this process of, of the new era of filming, um, everyone's kind of adjusted quite well and things seem safe. People are in good spirits and there's good work being done. By the way, I'm so curious, did you guys know each other before you started working on this film or no? Ish. Ish. <laughs> yeah, we, we knew of each other and we've, yeah. we've, we've seen each other in passing, sort of. Mm -hmm. we, have a lot of, we have a lot of friends in, in common, but we didn't know each other that well. No, we've never worked together. I mean, I've always wanted to work with Sarah. She's Aww. well known as being one of Canada's greatest. Um, yeah, we, we, we definitely met at, um, you know, the, the odd film festival thing or things like that. And, mm -hmm. But it was, yeah, that was a great occasion to come back uh, and finally work with, uh, with the cannery, with Ms. Canning. <laughs> I love that. Okay, our next question, it's a good one. And I feel like I might know this, but maybe you'll surprise me, is what is your favorite Christmas movie of all time? I've talked about mine several times already on this call. So it's a boring answer. I, I love It's a Wonderful, wonderful Life. It's my life. favorite. Yeah, it's my favorite. Um, I think that's mine too. Yeah. I love that. I keep wanting to It's a just... Wonderful Lifetime because that's yeah. what the holiday yeah. programming. I'm like, wait, it's a Wonderful Lifetime. That's right. Oh, yeah. Okay, next question is, what is a quality your character has that you admire about them? I, oh, well, I, I, I like Oscar because I think he shows a bit of selflessness, um, even though he he's really vulnerable in for some aspects. You know, I don't I don't want to give too much away for our fans and our viewers. But um, yeah, there's things he struggles with, but he doesn't try to put himself first. I think the things that are important to him, that the integrity is there, I think. And, and, and he really espouses these Christmas, these holiday values and, and family. And I think that's, that's um, yeah, it's virtuous. So I, I admire that, that quality. If a, if a woman or man can, can live nobly like that or thoughtfully like that, that I really admire that. Absolutely. How about you, Sarah? I think um, I'm leaning more towards the way that Caroline approaches her work um, because even though she's a little, a little bit grinchy when she first <laughs> gets to the, the mm -hmm. small town that our film is set in, um, her philosophy is that if, you know, if you're going to be somewhere, you've got to really be there and really experience, experience it. And, um, I, I certainly try to live my life that way. Um, so yeah, I think there's like a, a um, an all in aspect, uh, to her work and the way she approaches her life. And I, I admire that a lot. I try to be I try to be very present um, to whatever I have going on, uh, good or bad. I just yeah. try to really experience it. So yeah, I admire that about her. It's a great quality to have. Okay, our mm -hmm. next question. I love this one. What is your favorite Christmas tradition? Hmm. I mean, okay. Uh, um, so usually Christmas Eve, um, See, this is like where I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little mature now. But when I was younger, <laughs> we'd all be, we'd be around, all the kids would be at home and growing up all Christmas Eve, we'd, um, it would be like small, small things to eat together and everyone would put their stockings out and the tree would be set up and we'd see all the presents that we'd be expecting or hoping to still be there in the morning. Um, and then uh, I, I usually would go to uh, a church service with my mom at midnight, this midnight, and hear some beautiful choral music and all those amazing Christmas carols. And then the next day, um, all the kids would open the presents. This is probably very common for many, many people, but you open the presents under the tree and your stockings first thing, and then you're having a huge, crazy meal. And um, I think that my favorite tradition is like me and my brothers would always fight over the biggest drumstick on the turkey. <laughs> And then whoever could eat the whole thing first. And then I'd go in a, into a, a turkey coma, probably till about Easter. And then um, do the same thing again. Yeah, good. Oh, I love that. Okay, Sarah, how about you? What's your favorite Christmas tradition? I don't get to do it every year, but um, 
I've, I've done, I've certainly done it a few years. Um, I, I grew up in Newfoundland on the East coast of Canada. So uh, the years that I get back there for Christmas, my dad and I um, will skate on a pond uh, and it's perfectly silent and beautiful. And um, it's by far the best thing I've ever done um, on any Christmas. And even though I don't get to do it every year, uh, and the last time we went, bless him, he <laughs> he had these old skates that he hadn't worn in probably like 20 years that were packed away in someone's basement. And like, it was like skating on cardboard, essentially, like he could barely, <laughs> he could barely like hobble along, but he still came with me. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's, that, that would be it. I love that so much. That's so great. Okay, we only have time for a few more. And there's some really funny ones here, which I'm, I want to get to. Um, this one is so good. Zach, it's for you. Will you be able to DJ again with the pandemic? That's a great question. I've asked myself that a lot. Um, where I am right now, all nightclubs are closed. And I'm somebody who, like you hear what I was talking about, how I, what's important to me acting is that connection or that chemistry or my ability to, to connect, to transfer with my, my, my castmates. Same thing DJing. Um, if there's not a dance floor, if I don't see people responding to what I'm doing, then I'm not sort of symbiotically moving with them. So I don't feel that inspiration. There are opportunities for me to DJ where, you know, people can't stand up from their tables unless they go to the bathroom or are leaving a place. And if there's no dancing and the volume's got to be low. It, it's just, you might as well put on an eight track or, you know, like satellite radio in the background. So I think DJing for me, until we're back at a point where we can be free as dancers and in that moment and in that music and in that social way of meeting your future girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife or go out with friends and dance like that, I, I, DJing just doesn't really make sense for me. So we can't DJ here right now. And if it ever comes back, in what aspect will it come back? I guess that remains to be seen, but I probably won't be DJing unless I can be touching somebody with my music. I imagine you DJing if DJing in the jacket that you're wearing with the white shirt underneath. This is my like, this is Zach's DJ outfit. Am I close or, or no? Oh yeah. I mean, lots of times I DJ in a three piece suit. Um, yes. Yeah, so, you know, and, but I've been known to DJ in a tank top, uh, you know, it'll, I guess it all depends on what the situation is. Oh, I love it. Okay. This is a good one coming up here. This question, it might make you blush, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. Do you ever feel that there is a real romance happening on these movies, especially like a lifetime holiday movie where everything is just so festive and romantic? Does it, does it, I don't know your, your status is in real life, but do you ever feel that real romance like has a chance mm -hmm. to blossom on movies like this? Do you mean on, within cast? Yeah. Even though, yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think it can blossom in a in a place like this. Absolutely, if it could blossom at at any point, yeah, you're right. It depends if people what their status is and what that connection is. The one interesting thing about acting is you don't always get the opportunity in real life just to stare into someone's eyes profoundly for hours and hours and have to try to connect with them. Us as humans, it's it's difficult. Like, you know, we're shy. It's hard to really connect with people. So yeah. um, I think you're just put into this place to really have chemistry, whether it's someone playing your son or daughter, your mom or your dad. But if it fits with a romantic partner and they're cool and, and the vibe is there and the story is beautiful, then yeah, I'm sure that's, <laughs> I'm sure, I mean, we know of famous couples who've met on a film set and, and uh, the rest is history, right? So yeah, I think it's possible. That's so true. I've never thought about it before, but it is so true how you always have to be so still and really present with the other, with your scene partner. We don't do that a vulnerable. lot in life. We've got That's a phone right. in our hand. We're, we're looking at something else. It's awkward, but it ha you know, you have to do that on these movies. So yeah, Sarah, is that something that you agree with? Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, it sort of depends on, um, you know, people work in different ways as well. And sometimes some, some actors are, are just a little more vulnerable and more accessible maybe than, than others. So um, yeah, it, it was so easy to do this film with Zach and he's just like a big, you know, transparent, beautiful, open book, I think in terms of how he works. And 
Um, and that's a, it's a real gift, like as an actor and, and as a friend, you know, and as a coworker to, to be able to, um, just live with that for a few weeks. It just really makes your job easy, especially when, um, yeah, when, when it's a film like this, where a lot sort of, a lot depends on, uh, what, what the sort of chemistry and the the awakening and all of those things between the two people like I think these films depend a lot on on that um these mm -hmm. holiday films so all of them I would say so yeah I yeah I love easy that peasy, I... lemon squeezy <laughs> <laughs> well I want to see you both in a sequel to the Christmas Yule blog called yeah. I came up with it the peach tree diaries <laughs> oh that's, that's what good. i want in the that's summer good. of that's... if 2021 is too soon summer 2022 but i think given your appreciation for peaches and all those fruits i say we do it more of caroline and oscar and, and she's a travel editor this is her job you know yeah. Mm -hmm. you're you heard welcome, it here lifetime. first fans yeah That's you're right. welcome lifetime i just came up with your next movie well i could keep talking to you both i just adore you guys and i love hearing about all of your holiday traditions um unfortunately though if i take up any more time then Jana and craig are going to be like guys what happened what happened to us yeah. so thank you both for joining us everybody don't forget to set a vcr if you have it a dvr whatever write it down on your calendar the christmas yule blog will air on Lifetime next Friday, November 6th at eight o'clock on the East Coast and in the Pacific time zones. So make sure to record that. All right, we're gonna take a quick break before we go into our next panel. So sit right there or grab a hot chocolate and we'll be right back. 